Hey everyone, welcome back to another Stimulus Update. I'm Logan. Hey, I'm Adeen. And we're gonna go ahead and kick this all off and discuss what is going on with the second round of stimulus. So Adeen, what do we got going on? We got more of the same coming out of Washington. Uh, actually, some different stuff too. We even now have some Democrats who are opposed to another set of $1,200 stimulus checks. So, which is odd because we have in the CARES Act, which is what Pelosi really pushed for it. It passed in the House and now the Senate, which they're supposed to be working on it, but right now they're really more focused on appointing some judges. And then it's like the Get America Back Outdoors Act. Either way, it's not what, I mean, we've got on one side of it, we've got people hurting for money. We've got this pandemic that's still going on. There's, there's a lot of people still unemployed, which we'll get to today. On the other side, we've got this huge systemic racism that needs to be addressed, and it should have been addressed a long time ago. And those are the two pressing issues. And right now, they're trying to appoint some judges and get, I guess, people back outside. So the Senate are completely dragging their feet, which is like, it's unbelievable. Realistically, it's, it's unbelievable. Yeah. yeah, it's mind boggling. And, you know, what you. The racism stuff, like you said, should have been addressed decades ago. Uh, we're still dealing with that. Uh, but then also in terms of all these stimulus packages, the fact that now we're having more of them come out and say, you know, maybe we don't need more stimulus. We don't need another set of $1,200 checks, which, you know, from a, from a textbook economics perspective, I can see where they're coming from. But it just doesn't make sense in terms of some of the headline numbers that we're hearing. You know, we talked about GDP is expected to go down 53%. Uh, we have terrible employment and unemployment numbers. Uh, and so now, you know, one of the comments that I've read is that that $1,200 check that we did with the original CARES Act was needed because we were going into this and we didn't know how long it was going to last. But now we kind of have a better idea of what it's looking like. Uh, things are stabilizing. And so I, I guess the concern is, does an additional $1,200 check really do much in terms of creating jobs? Does it do much in terms of helping people pay for their rent in a long-term sustainable manner? And what is the risk of getting people hooked on getting $1,200 checks. That's where that's where these concerns are coming from. And again, it's just surprising to me that even a couple of uh, Democrat senators are voicing these concerns. Okay, so let me let me throw this back at you. So our economy is based on consumption, right? Where it's it's we have to spend. Well, what better way to encourage people to spend than release another round of stimulus? And I know. The Republicans effectively have come out, Mitch McConnell, like they're all saying there's no way we're doing monthly, right? We're not doing the Andrew Yang approach. That's not happening. But Nancy Pelosi is talking about just $1,200 one time and extending unemployment. But we're not going to get to unemployment quite yet. But it's just a one time deal. Again, the same $1,200 come back out. So would that not solve a lot of the issues? And when people spend, there needs to be companies that have people employed that can take the money? I mean, is that, am I off on that? Yes and no. Uh, so on one hand, yes. Once people have money, they go out and they usually spend it. Now, people also save a lot more when they get, you know, stimulus checks and stuff like that, tax refunds. Uh, what, what the problem is, it's a one-time burst to the economy. So you get that money and you go out and you spend it, but then what? You still have the same issues that you had before you got the check, which is the concerns about, you know, do you have a job and a steady income? And then the question is, okay, well, what if we gave everybody a weekly or a monthly stimulus check to solve that problem? Well, now you get back into the root of politics, which is, you know, can we, can we do that and just send money to everybody every week or every month? And the answer seems to be at this point, no, we don't wanna do that for whether it's political reasons or people might think it's economic reasons. Um, so you, you have that. The other piece that, so I had a call with one of my clients today, it's a furniture store, and uh, they had one of the best months ever. Reason being, 
one, people got their tax refunds and they, when they got them in March and April, they couldn't go out and spend them. Plus they got the stimulus package, the stimulus checks. So they went out and spent. However, the issue they're having now is they can't get the furniture. There's no supply of furniture because parts are coming from overseas. Some of the complete furniture is coming from overseas. And so we have a supply chain issue and this is also evident in some other industries. Um, I, I've talked to a couple of people in the car industry, new car dealerships are having inventory issues because they can't get re-ups on, on their cars. And so yes, we can keep spending money but we also have to figure out the job situation of who's going to be producing the stuff that we're going to be buying. I got you. Which it's it's funny because it's all interesting because uh, the the Republicans keep saying wait and see, right? We're going to wait. We want to figure out what's going on first. And while they're saying that, you've got 40 million people out of work. You know, like right now, for example, we had a um, like today I had a guy that was a, a subcontractor for me, 10.99, and. He said he, he's waiting on his unemployment. He's still waiting on it. And it's been over a month since he first applied. And I responded to him the exact same way that you told me to respond to him, which was keep calling, you know, the North Carolina Department of, uh, you know, Commerce. And he said, I talked to three different people today and I got three different answers. So he's sitting here waiting for money to come in, hoping money comes in and he's getting different things. So while Congress is really out there, waiting and seeing there's a lot of people that are like ryan who is just sitting here hoping that money finally comes in so yeah and, and so that's that's a part of why it's starting to seem like both sides are warming up to increasing benefits to states and local governments because that's the issue right so the unemployment offices are overwhelmed they just can't answer all the calls uh, they, they're hiring people, they're having people work from home 24 seven to be able to respond on chats and emails. But the problem is these are all brand new programs. And so nobody's been trained. Nobody has a clue where to go. There's a lot of misinformation about, you know, what the steps are to get unemployment, especially if you're a independent contractor, a 1099 subcontractor. Uh, so that's creating a lot more frustration in terms of this whole process. And I don't know that just throwing a trillion dollars at the states is gonna solve that because by the time we pass the legislation, we get the money to the states, by the time they do all of this, it's gonna be next year. And so that's not really gonna help us either. And, and so now we come back full circle, what is the answer? Is it to do another round of stimulus? Yeah, and the, the thing is, is as, to me, as the politics happen, and they go on recess and they appoint the judges and they try to get America back outside or whatever they're doing, there's a lot of issues that need to be solved right now that can be solved or at least helped out initially. So, and, and on top of that, what makes it even more of a case for the Republicans is that um, ADP, who's a major payroll company, uh, came out and while a lot of economists thought that in May, that they were gonna lose another 8.75 million jobs. ADP came out and said, actually, we only lost about 2.75 from payroll. So it shows you that it's not, you know, like according to the numbers, it's not as bad. Maybe we're back on the up and up from here. So from a unemployment standpoint with the Republicans really trying to push getting everybody back to work and the Democrats saying, or we're saying, well, let's just help them out with unemployment, we'll do another round of stimulus. The numbers are kind of pointing towards what the Republicans are, are kind of saying. So from the numbers perspective, I guess, how can you go against it? Yeah, and you know, numbers, you know, numbers on one hand don't lie, but the other thing is you can look at different statistics that paint the picture you want to paint. And so, yes, sure, you know, it's slowing down, but we still lost 2.3 million jobs, right? And that's a stupid high number. And if we keep losing 2.3 million a week or a month, we're not going to be in a better place. So is it maybe bottoming out? Are we getting back to the upswing? Maybe, probably. Uh, does PPP have something to do with it? Probably. Does the fact that we're reopening parts of the economy help? Yes. But it's a much bigger structural issue that we haven't addressed. And then we also have a bigger problem which is which we're not seeing in the numbers again because of how you want to paint the picture what 
which is inflation, right? Uh, we've talked about this a number of times where the numbers that we see are so heavily driven by energy prices, by oil prices, which have gone down now, they've come back up. Uh, but essentially on paper, inflation is gonna be zero. But if you've been to the grocery store, and especially if you're an older person on a fixed income from Social Security, you're losing out. You're, all your expenses are going up, but you're gonna get that at the end of the year, you're gonna get your statement saying that your Social Security is gonna go up zero because inflation's zero. So to make sure I understand that, inflation is not, has not changed. Even with all this extra money, inflation is the same, but the price of everyday items has gone up. So those that are on a fixed income, whether it's social security or disability or whatever it is, according to the numbers, which is how they, I guess, based at the end of the year, they're staying the same because nothing has changed in the economy. But in reality, you can go to the grocery store and see that everything is, it looks like you didn't put in your VIC card. Exactly, and, and the other thing that happened after 08, 09, that was a very subtle change, is even though your prices might stay the same, the quantity of products that you're getting is lower. So a lot of manufacturers, especially with food, started making smaller packages to keep prices the same, and so that's not reflected in your inflation, but you're getting less, and you're paying the same amount. To me, that's inflation, but not the way it's counted. So again, going back to the numbers, yes, on paper, things might be stabilizing and getting better, but in reality, it's not. And so I don't know what the answer is gonna be here. It seems like the Senate isn't willing to do anything for a while, which is extremely disappointing. Uh, and what they wanna do is, again, not addressing the structural problems, they just wanna throw a Band-Aid on it. All right, we actually had a bit of a update with the Senate, so Adine, Break it down, what's going on? All right, so what ended up happening is the Senate, with regards to the PPP loans, ended up passing the bill that was passed in the House of Representatives last week. Uh, so earlier we talked about how they were dragging their feet, they might not get to it. Uh, it seems like they've prioritized it and just passed the same version that was passed in the House. They made some technical adjustments in the language but essentially what they did is they said, okay, we're gonna go ahead and extend the week, uh, the time we're gonna allow to use PPP funds from eight weeks to 24 weeks. That gives everybody plenty of time to use it on payroll, rent, utilities. So essentially no excuses to not have it forgiven. And uh, they've also lowered the bar in, in terms of payroll so now you can only you only have to use 60% of your PPP loan amount towards payroll and you can use 40% for everything else. Again, it makes it way easier to get uh, the PPP loan forgiven and makes it that much more powerful for small businesses. Cool, all right, so we'll leave it to the Senate to keep us on our toes as far as they're gonna pass it, then they're not gonna pass it, and now we're passing it. So. Sounds like some good news coming out of Washington for uh, small businesses. So, Dean, thank you. And now, back to us. So, let me ask you a question that we got in the comments yesterday, and it's a bit of a, a pivot from this, but it was, okay, Dean, if everybody's making more money, you know, we got unemployment, people are making more money, then why is the economy down? Why is the GDP down? Yeah, so again, uh, GDP is driven much more by by the value of goods and the consumption of goods. So if people are making more money, we gotta remember that for a big part of March and April, we weren't able to really spend that. So that's one problem. The second piece is what I talked about with my furniture store example, where we sometimes wanna go buy stuff, but it's unavailable. Uh, so think about Amazon deliveries, even if you have Prime, some of those deliveries didn't happen in two days, they happened in four, five, six because they had to figure out from which warehouse to pull them. So we, we have that happening. Uh, the other issue is people aren't spending every dollar that they're getting in stimulus money. They're paying off prior debt, which means that prior debt has already been counted in GDP, and now we don't get to count it again. Uh, things like rent generally don't count. Uh, so there, there's some other technical adjustments that go into it. And again, it's what picture do you want to paint when you read a headline number of GDP is down 
In most normal times, that's beyond depression. That's just awful. None of us can eat. Uh, but you're not seeing that when you go out and and life just seems like it's relatively normal for a, a, some part of people out there. Some A lot of people are working from home, so they're still earning money. Uh, it's just that adjustment that we're having. And again, it's hitting it's hitting that population who makes less money disproportionately harder because they're playing catch up with this extra money. And that's why they don't see the same effect as somebody who's in the middle and definitely not the people at the top. Uh, they haven't seen any effects from any of this. Okay, cool. All right, that makes sense. All right, so to kind of wrap all this up up and to recap it like always is we actually, as far as stimulus goes and in a second stimulus check, it really seems like Unfortunately, like the, the Democrats are starting to even lose steam themselves. They're, they're in this wait and see mode on the Republican side of what's going on. And it seems like some of the Democrats are starting to fall suit into that, whether it's a political move and they're just trying to appease it and get something passed or not. Um, only time will tell on that. Um, and then on the flip side, we have PPP, right? We, we, we thought it was going to pass really quickly as far as how the money uh, needs to be forgiven or how they can get forgiven um, in the Senate. But we have a bit of a stoppage on that. So as always, if you want any of this stuff to change, call up your local representatives. It's an election year. I know my family just voted in the Maryland election where I'm from. Um, so there's stuff that you can do about all of this because I think at this point, realistically, depending, it doesn't even matter what side you're on, I think you're frustrated. Like I think this is one of those times that realistically, Dean, I know for me, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that we, I've, been more exposed to all of this because of all the YouTube stuff that we're doing because you learn about it in school and then I've always kind of kept my head down and just done my own thing. But now that I'm actually seeing what's going on uh, from both sides, it's it's really eye-opening into how everything works or it's supposed to work, but how it actually happens. So I don't know if, if that's how you feel, but that's definitely how I feel. So guys, that's the news. That's what we got for today. As always, if you want to stay up to date with all this stuff and I guess hear me increasingly get more and more frustrated with each video, make sure you hit the subscribe button and we will see you guys tomorrow.